It finally feels like we've hit a good stride with the meta of Destiny, with new decks coming to the top all the time and deck teching becoming a more enjoyable and exciting adventure. Today we steer away from Constructed and dive into Draft, a format we have seen flourish since the release of Rivals. And we also take a look at Truce and how to optimize its ability for you. This is episode 77, Drafting Better. You have been well trained. No, you don't have to carry a sword to be powerful. No. I won't fail you. Oh, do not. I'm not afraid. Please do try. All right. All right, all right, all right, all right. I know, this is so fun. I love I love being here with everybody. So uh, thanks, guys, for watching. If you're watching live, we really appreciate you hanging out with us. Feel yeah. free to drop some questions in the chat, and we'll Mike's do our mug. best to answer them at the end of the show. Look at uh, Mike's mug, you guys. What is, what is Mike's mug? Mike has a Porg mug, for those who can't see it, and it's amazing. I was holding, oh. I was holding it up while I was drinking. I just have a monster. because I have my koozie. Because I need some energy. Um, yeah, so ask questions, we'll answer at the end of the show. We uh, have our first guest since we started our live show to, uh, today. Yeah. We've got one of our Patreons, Alexander, uh, will be coming to join us to talk draft. He's got some, some great experience with draft, both inside of Destiny as well as Magic, so looking forward to that. Uh, He's a good egg. Person. He's a good egg, we like him. Yes. So, uh, but aside from that, like, Destiny, how's it been going? Kim, you just drafted. I lost a draft, you guys. Yeah. But how was it? But you how played in a draft. draft. I, I went 0 and 3, just like normal. Nice. <laughs> how was the, how was the it experience was, for you? Okay, so I explain it as it was a ton of fun and infuriating at the same time. Mm -hmm. From a, um, when you're so used to having a deck that clicks and works. And suddenly you have this hodgepodge collection of things that you threw together that doesn't click in any way, shape, or form. Um, and I, every for every one of my games, I came out the gate really hot, and you and usually had a pretty good advantage starting out. And I kept saying it was going really good until it wasn't, and then <laughs> as soon as it wasn't, that was the end of that game. Um, the guy sitting next to me. Shame on us, but he ended up with EOB. EOB one. Um, I let it go. I shouldn't have let it go past me, but I was at that point looking by the time the second <laughs> one came around, like I should and I even teased him. He's a good buddy. Um, I even teased him and said, I should hate draft you. I'm just saying, I should hate draft you. <laughs> yeah, you should And I and I didn't. So I ended up with Saw and Callus. So I was going red yellow. Um All right. Which actually was did okay. I think honest. I think where I made my biggest mistake was still trying to get three upgrades out on characters. Like I had, I actually had okay weapons, and I had um, the the what the um, ah the vehicle that's in the rivals deck. It's name that just Fang Fighter. Fighter. Fang Fighter. I was like, it's something weird. Um, we'll take a look at that. Tomorrow. I got that out. I got that out a couple of times, which was great. But I think where I failed was getting all those weapons and paying to get them out um, mm -hmm. left me no resources to pay for my paid sides on my characters. So I was mm -hmm. often having to re because I couldn't pay for it. Right. Couldn't get the resource. Story of my life. I was even using the battlefield that gives you another resource. Um, and I was able to get a plot card that we were like, nobody's ever going to use this plot card. You're going to use it in draft. Um <laughs> I was able to get the one where you start out the game causing two indirect damage to your opponent. Nice. nice. That's cool. So that helped. That kind of yeah. helped, you know. That's two damage. Yeah, so I I had a decent amount of health that they had to, like, chunk through. But there were a few people that had 29 health. Mm. One guy, mm. he was not in my drafting group, but we played against each other. Drafted the Separatist Landing Craft, and they let him get a battle droid. Oh, <laughs> they let him get a battle droid. Yeah, so it came back around. He said the droid came around, like so it went through other people, and he had already drafted the the landing craft, so he was able to get the droid out when I was playing him. He had four characters wide. Oh, he got so he kept the droid and got it out. In yep, not in his lineup, but through yeah, the he craft. had Maz. Oh God, who else? Lobot. Uh, somebody else, and then got the droid out. That's impressive. 
Yeah, he kicked my butt. Sometimes mm. in drafting, you, if you want to have a chance at winning, you have to hate draft people just so they're not completely stacked. Yeah. Yeah. To be but perfectly it was, honest. It was so much fun. And we'll talk about it a little bit later in the show. But it was it was so much fun. And I learned a lot about what not to do next time. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Good. That first time through draft is always a challenge. But I did get... Did I get any cards that I really needed? I <laughs> I drew the other Saul and then argued with Jim that we had a second one. And before... And I wouldn't believe him. I swore that we had two, so I traded it. We didn't have two. Oh. Whoops. <laughs> Whoops. Whoops. <laughs> Nice. So now Solid. I owe Jim a, now I owe Jim another saw. Yeah. Y- y'all should just like have never mind. Uh, Mike, how about Oops. you? <laughs> What's Destiny look like? What's up, AG Wizard? Uh, Destiny for me lately. Uh, like as many of you know, I am moving right now and selling my house. So uh, there is not much going on Touch. for Destiny. Uh, it I'm is... saying hi to your dog, Mike. Sorry. Oh, how did I get in here? Uh, <laughs> just playing on, uh, TTS, um, playing, uh, trying to play a lot of, uh, you know, Mother Talzin and, uh, Darth Maul and just trying to make those decks work. Uh, it's a good, I think it's got potential. It's been a little slow going, but, uh, other than that, it's, it's, it's fun. It's good. I, I like getting on there and playing with the community and seeing what decks are coming out lately and all the, what people would call garbage or trash decks, uh, they're they're really starting to get fine tuned and they really started to do a lot of damage. So, uh, yeah, just basically TTS for me. Cool. Can I just say we're happy to have you back this week, Mike, and we missed you. Oh, thanks. I, I had to heckle to Jason. I had to heckle Jason all by myself last week, and that's a hard chore. It is a hard chore. I uh, I apologize I need my buddy to all back. the fans for not being here. Uh, had some family to take care of, but they are taken care of now, and I will be back here for you every week on Tuesday. Yay! Yeah, I actually, um, things have gotten a little quieter around here, so I did spend some time in TTF the other night, which was super fun. Um, I'm really intrigued by this Thrawn Talzin deck that, uh, that one of mm. the, um, Destiny Council folks piloted to the top four of, uh, the North Dakota regional before he conceded so he could let his buddy have a chance for a world seat. Mm. So, um, it's, it's not easy, man, but it's, it's cool. Uh, it's it's yeah. neat to see Thrawn come back in some sort of mm-hmm. uh, in a deck that works really well. And uh, I I lost the, I've lost most of the games with him so far, but I there's there's uh, there's something there that makes it work. And I, I, I'm now they've released their article. I'm curious to keep going with it. And uh, I say trying something different, but there's just a lot of Talzin out there right now for the villains. Yeah. That seems to be the yeah. that's the, okay. The character of choice, aside from a couple, we'll talk about in a minute, but. I really liked playing Callus. That was my first time playing through him, and man, he's a he's a solid character. I I, I guess I I kind of went. I need to find a good deck to put him in. He was solid, and at one die, he was solid at one die. Mm-hmm. Did Did you play him with his weapon? With his uh... I didn't get his. No, nope. I oh, think no. I I think I have it here at home though. Okay. I'm pretty sure I have his. I got to go through our stuff. I can't remember what we have anymore. Yeah, so I'm not trade away cards you have. I only bought two boxes, so I have to actually go through and see what I have. <laughs> Jason. My goal was to draft all my packs, and uh, I haven't. That's been what able I'm to, trying to do too. I haven't been able to get out of the house to draft, so uh, <laughs> I I'm still missing a ton. Uh, I got to mm, get it all. I'm together. missing a lot of legacies. But, I'm yeah. missing a lot of legacies. My goal is too is to hopefully get it through draft, and then I don't know if I brought anything new home. And then I bought five more packs somewhere else this week. So I have nice. a problem. <laughs> it's a good problem. It's a good problem. Very right. cool. Well, uh, thanks. Uh, just a quick shout out to all our Patreons. Um, I, I've been remiss with them recently. Me and Kim realized that we haven't been talking about them since we went live. And I uh, apologize for that. Uh, we definitely have some new folks over at the Chance Team Hang. I know. New folks over the Chance Team Hangouts. Having a lot of fun over there. Um, uh Matt Thanks. Cousineau, uh, who is the, uh, the the regional championship for his uh, regional up in um, in Canada. In, oh, God, I don't remember which city. I'm sorry, Matt. Um, Hamilton. Hamilton, yes. Hamilton, Ontario. He uh, he hangs out with us, uh, always provides some great advice. He, you know, he's the host of uh, Canto Bite Players Club. So lots of cool, a mixture of uh, cool hanging out content uh, over at our Hangouts, and uh, as well as uh, some really cool discussion groups and 
get to hang out with the three of us plus the other 19 members of the chance cube family which keeps what, rolling. what i know yeah we like we like our people um don't ever so do that again <laughs> yeah I know. sorry those of you who are listening consider yourselves lucky he's trying he's trying new things it was it like me trying land. to dab before we went live <laughs> it doesn't anyway. work it doesn't work <laughs> Uh, anyways, okay, so oh, let's just go into the news before I get myself in more in trouble. Yeah, let's go check out some news. Let me take that back, huh? Neil, find out what you need. <laughs> All right. So we really want to, you know, always like to take a look at the regionals that happened last weekend. Um, uh... It's so funny. I feel like as the regionals keep going further and further, the coverage of them gets, like, a little bit less and less. It's harder to find the information. It is! And I don't know why! I mean, it's, share, it's, the, share the love, you guys. Like, we want to hear about it. And yeah. We can't... We we have 19 family members, but that does not equal 50 states. So... <laughs> not, quite. Um, not quite. I can do that math. So, Yeah. Um, we need your help to get the yeah math. Um, I work at a bank, you guys. So we need your help. Give us some. Give us some help. But anyways, so uh, over in Manchester, the winner was the uh, Hero Vehicles deck. So that was uh, super exciting. That deck um, looks fun to play. Yeah, it's man. I played against it the other night on TTS, and just the number of supports and oh, it's I like it. the board state and. Mm -hmm. All you just need is a, a solid Y wing, and they steal your money with Ezra, and then all of a sudden you have to take that in. Uh, mm, no, not fair. Really, I need to try this deck. So what I found is, is when you start playing a deck like that, and you have all those supports out, it's almost challenging to remember, like what you need to play and in the order you play it in, because it starts to get kind of critical. Because you, you're, you're, yeah, you're activating a lot of a lot of things in the board state to do a lot of things. So. Uh, and, and the, the special chaining and stuff now too, uh, especially with all those vehicle decks. So, uh, yeah, you just, that's for me, that's the most challenging part is playing a giant board state and remembering what you've got into and what you still need to roll in and not forgetting something. Absolutely. Um, and, and the hero vehicle deck is just, it's just amazing to play, especially if you had a really talented player. Um, who's who's piloting it and to see it uh, I mean the success of that deck has been really behind keeping your characters alive uh, long enough to get those vehicles out mm -hmm. and I mean you know Ezra getting the money um, Rose helping fix those vehicles and then of course Ayla uh, controlling the die um, all three of them add value so even if one of them goes down early you still have uh, as long as you get those vehicles out soon yep. it's great this is still, I expected, like, this is the deck we expected last set with Hera, I feel like. Mm -hmm. And she right. just didn't have the right, she didn't have Rose. I mean, it's just funny. It's just weird to see a vehicle deck happening now without, everyone thought Hera would be the lead, the lead character for a vehicle deck. For sure. And uh, totally not it. And, <laughs> and then um, the, the next one, of course, was North Dakota. Uh, which surprised us with a mirror match in the finals with E Boba yeah. Fett E's seventh sister. That's the uh, first big Boba deck I've seen. Have you guys? I, have you guys seen a Boba deck anywhere else? No, I have not. That was the first one I've seen, and uh, it's very exciting because I I look forward to playing Boba. He's yeah. back there. I just haven't got to play him yet. Yeah, he, yeah, I agree. I have the same problem. You just have a porg back. I just. I do have a Porg behind me. I do not have decks like you guys do. I don't know. Uh, I guess I need a Porg. You guys both have Porgs. I get, I yes. Didn't, everybody. On to other things. It's definitely um, not a requirement. <laughs> yeah, so... I have a Wookiee coaster. You know, there's something about Boba 7 that I think it's uh, it's very it's very aggressive. It's the first, I think, real super, like, just out-of-the-gate aggro deck. Uh, I mean, OTK is is aggressive, but it's very combo-y to get to it. Whereas this one is... Uh, this one's just aggressive out of the gate with, with Boba and his die and, and mm -hmm. seventh, and it's it's great. Um, and then last but not least, uh, always a surprise from the, the Tulsa uh, Team Covenant. Their event was won by the same player who uh, won a recent... It wasn't, Dallas. Was it, a, was it? Oh, it was Dallas. It was Dallas. Um, and they piloted uh, Elite Ayla Padawan Padawan. That's crazy. 
So a mono blue deck. That deck's got to be fierce, and he must be super comfortable with it. Mm -hmm. Very cheap, like uh, economically, right? You mm -hmm. get um, the Padawans to, for cheaper that weapons. That helps, yep. And then I'm sure, uh, wow, gosh, what's that upgrade? Sorry, support you play down. One with the Force, Power of the Force. Uh, the Force is with you. Uh, <laughs> the Force makes sense. I'm cheap. just going to keep letting you go. Thank you. All right, let's not do that. Um, so great to see an, another diverse. And it's so funny because you look at the, if you follow the Facebook groups, and um, <laughs> thank you, Matthew. It uh, finds it, all it things. Finds all things. Good job, right? Matt. Um, just if you look at the Force card. <laughs> yeah, that's what we, it was going to be like that scene from Forrest Gump that we were just going to let him keep going. Force uh, rend, force throw. Oh, Lord. Okay. Um, uh, the Facebook groups. Right. That's where I was going. Everybody's <laughs> calling for an errata on Sabine Ezra or Sabine or, oh, my God, Sabine. I feel like running awful. interference is more of the problem than Sabine is. And if it was, then she would have won an event this weekend. Yeah. Well, I mean, hasn't so? I mean, Swamp Thing won. And then I think... It there was the Sabine deck across the pond that won, but it's she's not she's not controlling the field by any means. So, I I I have I understand she's difficult to play with, but I feel like it's more running interference than it is Sabine. Sabine's a strong character, but there are a lot of strong characters out there. So it's the it's the 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 action prevention that running interference mm -hmm. does that people just like. That's like, what I dislike. I don't know force porg. Um, yeah, let's get a force porg. But how so does a for, how does a force pork happen? I guess that's a conversation for a, a different that's show. That's a whole other show topic. That's not right a, for there. our that's show. That's a whole other show. <laughs> so that's I'm curious. Like I don't know. I don't know, Jason. I don't know. Uh, anyways, um, cool. Yeah. So news otherwise was pretty light. Uh, a lot of mm -hmm. folks were talking about worlds. Well, that was a news, right? Worlds. Uh, the seats. The random raffle seats came out. The random. Year. There were happy people. And unhappy people, sad. and all three of us, aggravated people, did not get seats. Sad no, no. people, no seats. No, no. Uh, but don't worry, uh, we will be up there. I know. Uh, keep open, regardless. Uh, uh, my wife and I are going to try on the uh, the last chance uh, fastest finger ticket sale on March thirtieth. Don't um, use yeah. your home internet speed. <laughs> right. Uh, thanks. As a reminder of last it's week's... a reminder of last week. Those of you who tuned in last week. Um, however... Kidding, Jason, I hope you get you. it. I hope you are able to get I've already seen a couple people say, oh, I got mine, but I'm not going. Yeah. But why did you Sorry. even put your name in the lottery? So hopefully we'll get one. If not, um, that means we can't play any of the side events, which would be kind of a bummer. However, um, you know, we'll be up there on a press pass, hopefully. Knock on wood. I don't, I don't have any wood. And... Oh, you're so... I was like, what's behind you? You have, like, wood paneling. This is particle board. That doesn't count. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so we'll be out there covering uh, as best we can. Uh, you'll hear more about the Chance Cube Open coming, um, and you'll hear uh, a ton of stuff. It's going to be great. In fact, we've got um, – I know Matt Kuzno is going to be playing. Um, I know Deso is planning to come up and play. Uh, and we're going to have, uh, between the Patreons and uh, us Chance Cube family folk, we're going to have a good 10 or 12 people showing up. Um, so I think we're going to have to release some sort of where's the chance cube now. So if you want a late night game, you'll always know where to know where to find ah. it. And if I can if I can twist Kim's arm into getting up there, she'll bring her assortment of board games. I better drive if that's the case. Yeah, assortment. That so I, how many yeah. you want me to bring? <laughs> yeah. So what's so what's back here? So we bought this. I bought this for board games. So I thought, oh, this would be really cool to put behind me, right? So I'm only using two shelves. She's talking for, about the shelves behind her. The shelves behind me, guys. Um, I'm looking at the table and I need another shelf. So, crap. I have a problem. So, it's exciting. Uh, hopefully, if you're up there, uh, let us know. Shoot us a message yeah. for sure. Um, we're trying to keep tabs on everybody who's, who's coming up, hanging out. Uh, and we'll be up there. I know the, um, the Knights of Ren and Artificery have teamed up for a happy hour, which we'll definitely be at. But uh, we'll try and have all sorts of kind of plan so if you're going up by yourself you will have a bunch of friends hanging out with you because yep. that's all we do is hang out and play games until we fall asleep which is usually like three in the morning <laughs> i'm yeah. old i fall asleep at like 10 not yeah well not 10 30. eastern time which is like oh mm. nine o'clock there jason's gonna have me try a monster energy drink for the first time that's what's mm. gonna happen uh-oh 
Anyways, uh, before we move on to our card tech, of course, uh, just a reminder, uh, we got a deal with Inked Gaming. Uh, use the promo code CHANCEKEEP12 to get 12% off your entire order. Uh, we've got a playmat up there for sale, but uh, there's tons of other stuff, so check it out. Do we have, Amy. Let me ask you, do we have a dice bag for sale? Do you know? Because I don't know. inquiring minds want to know. I, I need one. A dice bag? No, we could probably get one made. Kim, I is, need one! Is it your bedtime, Kim? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Actually, nice. on normal nights, I'm totally passed out on the couch by now. No, I mean, for my rival set. Like, I want my own little thingamajang. Mm. From, and I thought that would be really cool. Because yeah. keeping it in the box is the worst idea ever. Yeah, yeah. it is. Um, um, now, of course, the, the we have the dice. We have well, the deck box that has those cool like dice. Ooh, I could buy one of those binders. No. I mean, yeah. Have you seen them in them person? Just, I have seen them in person. Somebody bought one at my local shop. And I got to look at it. And it's... Um, the inside of one of their starters or rivals mm -hmm. in larger packaging. So, great job, guys! How's the outside? It's all right. Okay. The artwork's cool. They did pick artwork that I actually like, but this it's whole... still that. It, it's just I don't know how durable they're gonna be. That's mm -hmm. my only. They look like they're gonna them. fall apart pretty quick. I'm pretty rough on my stuff. Yeah, me too. Dang. Moving on. Card dissection types. Yes, it is. Let's do it. Bum, bum, bum. Hello, what have we here? All right. Card of the week. Yeah, so we're going to look at Truce. Uh, I, I picked <laughs> Truce because I feel like this is a... Uh... I don't know what's happening outside. <laughs> I'm going to mute. I don't know that what's going on. That was pretty loud. <laughs> wow. Uh, whoa, that's rough. My sympathies to your husband. <laughs> okay, I don't know what's happening. Uh, truce, yes, let's talk about Truce. Um, this is a card I, I've seen a lot of good work with. Uh, there's some really cool things you can do, and I think we're getting into a realm of uh, comboing. There's lots more uh, potential plays that you do after certain cards that really make them super valuable. Uh, Truce is one of those. So Truce is a zero cost yellow event that is neutral. Um, and it uh, says ambush, which is great. And then each player gains one resource. This card is so great. It's, it's great because, I mean, after your opponent claims, you can use it to, to surprise them with something. Um, you can sit on no resources and then Truce into a one resource to easy pickings or... Or some sort of control card. Um, one thing I, one thing I've loved to see is. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm trying to keep. A, I'm trying to keep a professional, organized Stay show. Stay professional. <laughs> That's not and fun. And this, and this live chat is the best is ever. Not helping. <laughs> uh, wow. She did fart. I can smell it from here. I have a bitmoji for that. Wow. <laughs> Man, oh, that was cr I'm sorry, you guys, though. Like, seriously, the neighbor's car horn just got stuck and wouldn't stop. Oh. <laughs> uh, that's funny. So I agree with you, Jason. I actually do put Truce in... It's been in most of my yellow decks because I struggle with resource management. So it's a good way to roll into... Um, if I roll into a side that needs pay, I need a pay side. This is great to have because I I would have loved to have had this in draft because I had all these pay sides and couldn't afford them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I've seen uh, these Sabuna Ezra decks uh, truce into an Ezra special. Oh yeah. So you give them a resource and you take it from them. That's lovely. Mm -hmm. That is pretty nice. I have not uh, seen that that's play, but that is pretty. That that's is not super so much, slick. That's not so much truce. Like that's a uh, ha ha fake. Like yeah. it's like I'll be your friend. Psych. Yeah, pretty much. That's that's like the hey, we're gonna go fifty fifty, and by fifty fifty ah. means I'm taking everything. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna take fifty percent, and I'm gonna take fifty percent. <laughs> so my favorite plays for this is when you roll out like a bunch of modified range side, and then you roll out that one. 
you know, three for a dollar and you have no money and people are like, oh, I'm not going to mitigate it. I'm not even going to look at it. I'm just going to do my own thing mm -hmm. over here. And then you could just, you could just keep like either rolling up to try and get more, more arranged in there, or you can just choose instantly and, and resolve it all. It works great. Uh, it catches people way off guard. Yeah. And m mind you though, giving someone a resource is kind of a big deal. That mm -hmm. could that could be potentially very It could hurt you too. Yeah, it could hurt you too. The only way this card works in my opinion is the fact that it has ambush because if you gave yep. if if it was a one resource one resource, you could almost instantly you could give someone a resource to instantly mitigate whatever you had. So, um I I do like this card um in my CAD uh decks I've been trying out, this is almost in every single one of them. Uh in the sure. yellow deck I'm playing is got a truce in it for sure. Yep. Super exciting. Well, truce is yeah, definitely. The... Oh, go ahead. No, that I think I was just reiterating what what kind of Mike said. Yeah, it's I I agree with you that it's it's that ambush that makes this that much sweeter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For sure. And yeah. it's free. Well, it'd be crummy. It'd productive. be pointless if it wasn't. Yeah, yeah. It, it would. Yeah, it'd be terrible. But <laughs> yeah, I use circles. this card a lot. Yeah, two dollars you can have. Wait. Nice. <sighs> My town stinks tonight. I'm just telling you guys now. Everybody's so driving by your house. Right? Is <sighs> I swear there's like, there must, I don't know. Maybe it's because this room gets brighter. Like, it's a pretty boring town I live in with all three stoplights. So it must seem like something's exciting happening at Bree's house. <laughs> They're coming well, to I check mean... out your light. <sighs> <sighs> I don't know. Excellent. Uh, so <laughs> let's uh, go ahead and give something away. Let's do it. Look, I ain't in this for your revolution, and I'm not in it for you, princess. I expect to be well paid. I'm in it for the money. Kim, can you recap last week for us? So, last week, you guys are getting sneaky. You guys are getting sneaky, 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 <laughs> and I feel like Mike and Matt are on this quest that you guys must just message people, like, around the <laughs> around the corner you guys are doing a great job with your you know what though i'm i'm challenged all of you are writing longer things and so that's awesome and i dig it so we'll keep playing this game mm -hmm. i like it i like the long answers but uh <laughs> <laughs> it they're a hoot to read but i'll get to that afterwards so um last week we had asked you what cards from rivals do you think we'll see the most play in, con in a constructed deck and why and i will say the majority of you said uh oh! What does the more majority of you guys say? Put it. <laughs> I wrote it like twenty-seven to times today. I wrote it twenty-seven-ish times today. Um, hidden motive, hidden motive, hidden motive. Att, come back. Hidden motive, guys. Um. So a lot of people think hidden motive is going to see the most play. I and I can totally see that. Like it fits so nicely in blue decks. So this week we're giving away some of those awesome. Shield tokens. Jason, you want to tell us about those? the prize? Oh, yeah. So it's the uh, quarter three shield tokens that came with the last um, Ooh, that, nice. that quarter prize set. Yeah. I actually won them. Oh, like, Lord. Yeah. I know. It's shocking. I don't usually do that very often. But, uh, yeah, it's, I won some shield tokens. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't use awesome. them. So uh, they have not been used. So awesome. they're, they're for whoever Kim just pulled out of the at, -AT. Maybe they would be worth more if you did play with them, Jason. Yes, that's the best. This answer. is not the this is not the longest one, no? mind you. Yes. No. Thank you guys. So Thank before you. I read Longer. this, because because <laughs> shh, quiet you. So before I read this, I was gonna give a shout out, and this happens to be Mr. Simon Turner's answer. <laughs> <laughs> of course, which. It is. Which I which I wish that I could read this in the performance level that it actually deserves to be read in because this was quite good. Um, so that's that's cool that I pulled him out. But to, shout out to Simon, Jeffrey, Taylor, and Mark who all had hidden messages in your <laughs> Facebook statements for me to find <laughs> while I was writing them today. Uh, yes. So Simon's answer again. This one's fan. This one's fantastic. I think the lowly Jawa will see more play than expected. Why? Utini! Who doesn't want the opportunity to say Utini as often as possible? People will rig up special glow-in-the-dark eye versions, bring Lego Jawa minifigures along, and wear hoods down over their eyes as they play five Jawa decks. As they play, sorry. 
Five Jawa decks will be sought by many people who want to bring a surprise deck to Worlds. Palpatine himself will be brought to his knees, so that he's the right height, as the mini menaces and their redeploy <laughs> weapons march from here to the championship. Also, Utini! And he ended it with long enough answer. So, congratulations, Simon. Yes, Simon, I appreciate it. Thank you. This one was a very... There were, you guys, there were a lot of great answers. So, half the fun in you guys giving me these long, drawn-out <laughs> answers is just getting incredibly creative when I dig it. So, um, yes. keep them coming. I'm going to keep writing. Just bring it. Nice it. job, guys, and I congrats. Love it. Sheets of paper in there. Congrats, Simon. I'm assuming these are going to Australia, so these are going to Australia. They may take a little time, but they'll get there. Uh, as far as this week, for everyone else, uh, another chance to write the longest answer possible. So <laughs> Kim can write Longer. it down and put it in her ATAT. Uh, Longer. All uh, well, these go in the these go in the Death Star now. Uh, what character combination are you most looking forward to playing in trilogy format and why? And the winner this week is going to uh, get the extended art Phasma and Poe from the uh, Star Wars Insider. I got a couple of those. Those are sharp. Sitting Man, around. Sharp. So, yeah. So we'll get, you, we'll get a set out to the random person who gets drawn out of the ad at next week. Nice. Thanks, guys. Good answers. So we're going to move into our discussion um, after this uh, message from our sponsor, and then we'll have our special guest on. Yeah, guys, it might, we might have like a little two-minute break to get the, the guest on, but we'll be right back. Want to get notifications when your favorite game is released, goes on sale, or changes price? This is a great feature you can find over at Miniature Market. They have an extensive selection of games, game supplies, and of course, Star Wars Destiny. With any item, you can get notifications when the item is in stock, drops in price, and much, much more. And of course, you can purchase singles, booster packs, and booster boxes, all from the comfort of your computer or mobile device. Their rewards program gives points to repeat customers to use towards discounts on future purchases. Miniature Market also has an extensive buyback program, and will even increase the value of your cards by up to 30% if you choose to receive store credit. And don't forget, free shipping on orders over $99. Miniature Market, a proud sponsor of the Chance Cube. But you know what I would say. Speak softly and drive a big tank. All right. Well, we are back. Uh, we are very fortunate. This is our first guest since we went live, so super excited. Uh, we have Alexander with us here who has a, a vast experience drafting both in and outside Destiny. So, Alex, thanks for joining us tonight. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Hi, super fun. Alex. So we're, uh, we're going to talk about draft, and we're going to talk about draft uh, in, in a lot of different ways. Um, mostly what we want to hope to get out of this discussion is just some tips and tricks now that draft has been around for a couple of months for Destiny, what, what works and what doesn't. I know early on people were really trying to talk about um, the, the use of the magic formula, which is the, that whole bread idea where you, you try and draft the, the power cards and the removals, and then like the, the, but it doesn't really... I personally don't know if that's that's the way Destiny wants to go. Um, Destiny has some unique challenges because you have uh, just three dice uh, per draft pile, and um, it plays so differently than your normal gameplay, especially since you know we we're used to teching a deck for so long, and then all of a sudden you get like a bunch of garbage. Like, a bunch of garbage. So a bunch um, of garbage. <laughs> I'm just I'm just speaking from personal experience. So uh, we'll throw it to Alex first to kick this off. Um, Alex, what do you think, uh, how, how is Destiny drafting different than drafting in other collectible card games? I've drafted many numerous uh, collectible card games, and I have to say Destiny is very unique because this is one of the games that you want to look at every color that you get to draft where you have Anakin, Lobot, and yes, you want to kind of just look in your mind. I want to make sure that I have a color common where I can play in the strengths of all of them. You don't want to just limit yourself to one color, two colors, like you can possibly do. Let's just say man. And I've really learned that if you don't keep yourself open right away, you're going to be in for a huge problem while you're building your deck later on. Um... For instance, Anakin. Everyone's like, "Oh, he's the he's he's everyone's going to use him." 
if I find a blue carrot in one of my pack, I tend to cut him. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he's got a decent health, but he has a pay side for the damage, and you don't always have the money you need. And preach, I'm, Alex, and, preach. And, and I'm well. I'm going to preach because, you know, Kim, you say you have resource management. Yeah, he may have a resource side, which most people try. What I've noticed is they'll re-roll for a damage. Mm-hmm. And I think you need in draft, you're going to take that resource side. Yep. You're, going to, you're going to claim it because you know you're going to need it for something else as time goes on in the draft. Yeah, his special is really nothing to look at when you're draft. Because then you're limiting, okay, I only want him, or I only want villain. Well, then you're classing up some really good news on them. Mm-hmm. So, and I, and I've been, and the only thing that I've said is, thank God Hank was part of the starter kits. Because if that was in draft, I think I would be someone was playing. <laughs> yeah, that card is just, to me, I think entangles very. Mm-hmm. Thank God we're getting that on a and and every yeah um, so, you'll go ahead i i so you know what's really interesting about draft that um i noticed i'm i'm sure the two of y'all or three of y'all have have felt this too um a challenge with draft and destiny is that we're used to building decks that have 10 or 12 dice or more depending on the archetype we're going with and then with draft um you're going to get what's in Rivals, which depending on what faction you choose, you're looking at maybe five or six. Um, and then when you're drafting your packs, the more characters you draft, mm-hmm. the less dice you're going to end up having in your deck because right. you can't use all the characters. Mm-hmm. Um, one card that I've noticed that I overlooked in the very beginning, um, and I think everybody makes mistakes when they first start out a format. But I mean, I saw it and I just like... It, like, and I had it on my side pile and read it again, is Fight Back. Mm-hmm. Mm. That card has proven its weight in gold for me because I've had one, I would agree. I've had one damage showing and the guy had or like, you know, three and I'm like please get rid of that. Because you, you don't want to, any type of removal in this format I think is something that you want to look at. Because mm-hmm. you want to save your characters and you want to save your, you know, the damage that you can intake to a minimum, like anything, and like even mm-hmm. in, even in constructed. But I feel like your money is where there's a problem. And this, I think everyone was like, "Oh, it's going to be because you're not going to have everything to spend your resources on." Um, no, because I've unfortunately, you know, legacy was formed around brass, so. I've had the unfortunate of having to play again. Uh, where was it? Um, the new what? Newt Gunray. Mm. So mm-hmm. annoying. Draft. So annoying. <laughs> I I can't even begin to tell you how that card. I think you know. He, yeah, he's only eight points, but he does a lot. He has he has a two disc on his thing, and they're always trying to find a way to focus it in. Yeah. Oh yeah. Now my local shop, we actually they had everything from to legacy in stock, so they let us pick any number of packs we wanted um, from whatever sets that we wanted. And I think that's a lot of fun. I mean, that diversified things a lot. Yeah, I mean, I think your people who chose like the Awakening mm-hmm. packs were looking for that low cost removal. Yeah. Um, and I think the people that using like Spirit of Rebellion were looking for that high impact character. Um, but you know, like I said, we've seen these characters now evolve where the cost ratio is so much better than what it used to be. So I mean, as much as I loved just playing Awaken and just having it, hey, this is the first set. I mean, you take a look at it now. And you look at one of my, I'll be honest, one of my favorite characters out of there was Dooku. He's 11.50. You compare him now to Mother Tells It. And you're like, yeah, I'd rather play Tells It. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she's, a, she's a 9.12. She may be only 9 health. Dooku's 10. 
So, I mean, but her ability is just that much stronger. Right. Yeah, they've evolved that a lot, I think. Mm -hmm. Just with those character abilities. And I think Awakenings being the way that they wanted the format, the draft format to be, and I think you can see the impact of how draft has changed what people see as cards that so-called, oh, that's a lousy. Well, mm -hmm. Not lousy, because it has a purpose to draft. And I, I think that's one of my key aggravations with any collectible card game. You have all these people who just play standard or or whatever. They're just the equivalent of like just playing the the cards that are only good in the, the decks that are winning. Mm -hmm. Well, there was a format for them to be played in other ways. And that's where they shine more than they would elsewhere. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a good point. To, yep. I think people need to open their minds a little bit when they're looking at some of these newer cards and say, Oh, Okay, emulate. You know what? In the very beginning, I ran emulate because I'm telling you, everyone was running guard, uh, was running Anik. I'm like, all right, so I know I'm going to have it. And I'm going to be able to get something out of it. And I and you know, if now would I be late? Probably. I, I I'll probably pull it back. <clears throat> I wish there was probably in the draft sense a probably best of three. Because some things just come down to, you know, bad rolls. And, mm -hmm. and mm, that's you know, a good point. Yeah. That construction is where, you, you know, you shuffle, you just get cut. Sometimes it happens. I mean, we're, you know, there's so many variables that can change what is actually seen playing in drafts. Mm -hmm. Right. Where, you know, I've played drafts for other where you can really diversify threat because there's different ways to get your characters out this game your characters are dark but then in order to upgrades really have to find that sweet spot and how much money you're going to be putting or how much you know resources you put into card because right. you don't always get the best investment turn put it out and i've noticed that i really wanted to play you know the T21 Repeating Blast. Mm. I feel like that card hates me. But, you know, and I'm sure I'm sure it was just my luck. Like, I I think the entire time I rolled the plus two and everyone was able to mitigate, you know, yeah. the, not mm -hmm. my regular duh, rain side. So that card, I'm like, paid three for it and never paid me back in yeah. investment. And I had I ran into that, that too. Yep. Needed. You know, so I had range characters that just didn't end up working for me. So now, Alex, let me ask you this. I know I, one of the mistakes I felt that I made it was trying to go ahead and get those upgrades out. So I, at one point in time, I had Callus with three different weapons on him. Um, one of them, actually, one of them might have been the holster, but he had three upgrades on him. But then I find myself, well, now that I paid for these upgrades, now I don't have any money to pay for the damage sides that are on some of these. And so I kind of thought, next time, maybe I need to hold that other weapon back a little bit and just let, even though it's not as many dice as I'm used to rolling out, just let them do the work for me for a little bit so I can actually pay for these damage sides that I may roll into. Yeah. And I don't know if you remember ever playing against the Mo King deck. Mm-hmm. Um, me... A lot of people were playing the variant where they were adding all these upgrades to, you know, Darth, okay, at that time, you know, SOR Darth Vader, where I would actually roll him out, and if I rolled threes, I would pay for those instead of putting upgrades out. Right. So what I say is, depending on how much you're going to have to play whatever upgrade it was, yeah, at some point you just go, okay, I'm going to roll. I'm going to just get this out. Maybe I'm going to see if I have any mitigation that I could do. Mm -hmm. Then play it at the end of the turn because then you're going to diversify your threat because you're going to get two more resources in the beginning of your next turn. And and I think a lot of a lot of mistakes that people make is they want to just slam down that yep. up because they think, oh, I got more dice and I'm going to win. Well, if you can't pay for what you're, what's out there, then essentially – you're still giving up your exactly. Yep, Breach. and and also what can 
happen is if they have anything that can throw it back at you, that's yeah. when it gets worse. And for myself, I've, you know, nothing feels worse when you leave damage on the table. I think we've all been there. I mean, it just happens playing. And when you leave damage on the table, you're just like, why? Why? <laughs> right. <laughs> and, you know, resource management is is such a key thing in this game that I sometimes don't uh, I actually will o- won't overwrite a weapon unless it's going to give me an ambush action to resolve some sort of resource. Um, and that's why I liked what you brought in truth because mm-hmm. if, you can, if you can use truth to your advantage where you know you're going to nullify that resource for somebody, it is just absolutely I mean, you know, it's good for you, bad for your opponent, but it's still, right. it still mm-hmm. feels right when you get to get it done. Is there one particular card out of the, the draft set that you've had any thoughts? Like, is it any good or is it should be used in, a, in your deck? Mm. That craft That's lightsaber. a good question. <laughs> Which one? Crafted yeah, lightsaber. that one's tricky. I I play crafted lightsaber in almost any blue villain deck I'm playing. That that thing just does work, um, and I don't mind playing it on uh, an exhausted character because, like you said, I usually wait to play my um, my um, upgrades toward the end of the round, so I so diversify my threat, showing that maybe I do have some sort of mitigation in my hand. So you better resolve, you better figure it out because I have you just like you said diversifying my threat. So that's why I really like crafted lightsaber. Yeah, and honest, I think it was probably one of the smartest cards they made for new players in draft. I really think that they were trying to show them you don't have to play it first to make it good. Yeah, they they taught you something without teaching you, basically. Yeah, and yeah, they're like, look, you play this, you're going to see the result next turn. Right. And, and and I think everyone's biggest mistake was the that rush. Mm. You want to rush in. You want to do all this damage. And draft does not go fast. No, not at all. I think it is a very grindy, very slow. Uh, you have to be very thoughtful what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Um, and thank God for Lobot because I love. Lobot's gotten a lot of love, I've Lobot's noticed. Cool. Like even in some of our comments, like um and our question last week, there next to that was probably the next um highest mentioned, I guess. Wow. Um was Lobot seen seen play. And I somebody else had made a prediction that they think like by the end of this meta, before we go to the next set, that you'll see Lobot appearing in some of the high performing decks. So I'm curious to see if that pans out. Well, he just look I mean, hit look, the only thing that he has against in my opinion, is that nine, but yes. that's still not that bad. Considering if you're looking at Mother Talzin with mm-hmm. right. health, right? So, but you know his point value is ten thirteen. It's it's kind of a weird spot because everyone goes ten thirteen. I'd rather play Yoda. I mean, and that's just kind of. But that's also going to be a different deck entirely, right? But, I mean, you look at him, and I yeah. honestly say he's got one rank, he's got one focus, he has one shield, he has a resource, and he has the special. Which he is gives ridiculous. me any. Right. And then, of course, you know, the blank. Whatever side I roll with, him, I'm happy, especially in draft. Mm-hmm. I would agree with that. Yeah. I kind of, looking back on how I selected my characters before, I think I would have been better off sticking to one of my maybe one of the more powerful guys that I drafted and then looking to slot in Lobot instead. So it's, it's some of the, like I said, there were a lot of takeaways that, okay, don't do that again. That was bad. That was not the best idea you've ever had. Um, and it is like thinking that you're going to draft a character that maybe you're just, you'll take all these ones out of the rivals kit out. And I don't think that's the case. I think they're worth paying a closer attention to and, and working to slot them in because they're not, I mean, Lobot's great. So, I, my only problem with Lobot in uh, in the draft format is like you want to play him. You want to play him as elite. You want to play him two character. I, 
Mm, yeah. He's oh. good. He's good at a single die. He's pretty lethal at a two die. Mm -hmm. Oh my. I, I couldn't agree more because I just tested him one day just for fun, Mike. And I completely agree with you. Yeah. If you had, if like, if there was a way to have two dice for him in draft, you would be very disgusted with your opponent. If, if yeah. they were able to open two, <laughs> and it's just if you roll double his special, you yeah. Would, like, oh your yeah. One damage is now doing three. <laughs> it's just I'm glad they limited where you can only have him is in draft. Yeah. Otherwise, I think he would just, he would be one of those cards that would be oppressive in the draft. Well, mm -hmm. he would also make it unfun. And the, the exactly fa Final Fantasy has said quite a few times that this game is being changed constantly to make it continually be fun. They don't mm -hmm. want to make it to where there's one deck just smashing everybody and it's not fun for everybody else. So I think that's why maybe you're not allowed to get two low bots in draft. Yeah, I would agree with you because yeah, I can see that tanking that pretty quick. Yeah, mm. but yeah, I mean, I have you. Has anyone here run Ketsu yet? Did I say Final Fantasy? I did Fantasy? not. Oh you man, did, uh, you may have. Uh, but I knew what you meant. <laughs> too much PlayStation lately. <laughs> I've seen Ketsu. I played against Ketsu. I've not played. Ketsu oh, myself, sick! Chocobo's but... reference. <laughs> oh, that's going beyond. Uh, yeah, I mean, Ketsu is definitely that, that read. I played in. against it. Mm -hmm. I played against Ketsu, but I didn't, I was, I was trying and I, I couldn't make the math work, but, um, it, that, it wasn't the, I didn't like necessarily being on the receiving end. Like I, it made me go, mm. hmm, I need to consider that next time. Yeah, she, she, I have yet to make her work because I've got other yellow characters that just tend to, was mm -hmm. better. Um, one of my one of my drafts, I had a Gamorrean guard, so he was worth his weight in gold as being guardian. So I played the big pig and was just happy with it. So. <laughs> nice, yeah, Ketsu. Cool. She she can definitely do work, and she can play. She almost feels like that um, Anakin role where you have that mixed damage, so you can mm -hmm. either go like a ranged or a melee, and then her other sides, you know, are nothing to nothing to balk at and. I love playing cards that have a resource side. I feel like almost any dice that you play should have I at agree. least one resource side. So, Ketsu, again, nine, nine health for 11, 14. So you're getting a little, even a little steeper on your um, cost management, but still a good character. But there is better yellow characters in your in your um, build format. But in draft, mm -hmm. I, 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 I've played her. I've played her in draft and she does well, so. Yeah, I like her. Yeah. I haven't had a chance to ever get her to work um, because just of my point cost of where I was at. Yeah. But I like the idea that if I wanted to load her up, they have to make a choice. Do they want to kill her? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, they're going to just redeploy the weapons that don't have it anyways. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm going to get my dice back. And I really love it. But yet, like I said, I haven't had that chance to really get it so, so yeah, go ahead, Jason. Sorry, uh, your muffler man, muffler my, man, motorcycle man has come through. Um, before we <coughs> move on to to the questions uh, and the rest of the show, uh, I would like to spend a moment talking about when you get your draft stuff. When you get your three packs, you open them up. How? What? What should be your thought process on what? you're picking out of the pack. I, I think we all have our own personal thought processes and sometimes you get that character, man. I had man. zero. I had zero thought process. How is this? I went, How about I crack... Yellow and red! Yellow and red! <laughs> How about I crack some the three packs of Awakenings that I have right here? Yeah! There you yeah. go. Oh, live, live pack opening here. Oh, well, yeah. sort of. We're doing it. Cracking sort of. Packs here. <laughs> hey, it's fun opening oh packs goodness. live. I love opening packs live. I just like I don't care where I am. I'll open packs. Well, he, here we are. We're doing some awake packs. That sound. That sound. I like I said, I I try to get the uh, the let the legacies, but every place was sold out in my area. So, the dice cards that we pulled, ladies and gentlemen, uh, force choke. Hmm. Hey, so, that goes in your. Never mind, Jason. <laughs> that that right there is me a very good sign that I probably want to play blue. Yeah. 
<laughs> uh, the oh, next yeah. card is Force Protection. Meh. Um, it could be no good in draft, though. Two special sides, and it gets three shields as you distribute. I say, yeah, it'd probably be really beneficial in generating some shields in draft. Yeah, but the only problem is, once again, it's three. So I'm kind of, like, torn. I don't know which direction I want to go here. And then the last one was Rebel Trooper. Bleh. Well, he fits a role. He's at eight. Yeah. Let's I know. He's he's lost it in draft. If everything you think is terrible, like you said earlier, everything you think in, that's a, that's a real word, in Bleh. constructed is actually really, could be really helpful in draft. All right. So let's just say all the dice cards weren't, and you're just looking at the cards that, let's say all the dice cards were picked, you had nothing, and you're just looking at the rest of the card. We have Closing the Net, Disarm, Go for the Kill. We have a uh, Battlefield with Separatist Space, Tactical Mastery, mm. Hit and Run, Squad Ooh. Tactics. We have another um, Battlefield, which is Jedi Temple. Another one, which is Echo Base. Second Chance, Unpredictable. <laughs> And then Noble Sack. Oh, Unpredictable, I feel like, would be super helpful. I'm looking but at that Tactical game. Mastery. Yeah, see, I'm looking at it, like, right now. Let's say if you chose... Let's say you chose the Rebel Trooper. All right? Maybe you wanted to go red. You wanted to have that Guardian key ability. Mm -hmm. That's um, true. But, you know, it doesn't matter, because you can use anything in your deck. I'm out of this path. Disarm is a card that people are overlooking. It is... Does everyone remember what Disarm does? I'm going to bring it up right now. Everyone will see it so I don't have to read it? Uh, yeah, everybody is looking at it right now. Go ahead and read it just for... If anybody okay. listens. Remove one of your dice showing damage. Uh, either melee or... You know... Well, right all, all damage. All, all damage. All damage. Yeah. That dang... To discard a weapon or equipment from play that costs less than or equal to the value of that die. That yeah. thing's helpful. That's an yeah. amazing card. <laughs> and see, in draft, I'm looking at that. Yeah. It's a it's a nice card. I'm also looking at Tactical Mastery because that card is just good. Um, and then for myself, um, I like the idea of Second Chance. Mm -hmm. Because I know it's a little expensive, but when you can put that down on the if you're playing a yellow character, that is really really good. That's that's buying you a lot of time that you need. Oh yeah. I mean, it buys you time and right in constructed. I mean, it, it's a great. And I'm just thinking in draft that may be just a little bit that you need to either mill your opponent or get that get that last bit of damage out there. Yep. And you know, I said you know this is pretty interesting because you saw this pack and if you decided to choose that rebel trooper i'm pretty sure you're gonna look back and be like hey maybe if i get another non-unique or whatever it can happen sometimes but squad tactics was in that pack you want to kind of look back and I'm like is this card gonna come around again am i am i gonna get a couple of non-unique characters maybe maybe not but you I mean I have never played with the Jawa. I know, I know people are probably like, you have to play him, but I have yet to play him. He just hasn't been able to fill the roles that I need. Yeah, but mm -hmm. out of the out of that pack, minus the battlefield, I definitely would be looking at disarm, tactical mastery, and second chance. I think those three cards are something that are worth looking at. Oh yeah. Um, what would be your pick, Kim? I would probably still nab the second chance. Okay. And I can't fault you for that, because I think that card is very good. What about you, Jason? <clears throat> That's a good question. I am I mean, second chance is hard to pass up. I already but, have it. You have to pick a know, different card. Okay. Um, <laughs> I already took it in the draft. It's right here in my imaginary card. Okay. Well, then I'm probably going for... <laughs> Um, gosh, I'm probably going for that tactical mastery because action cheating 
in draft doesn't happen. Huge. Mm -hmm. um, and anything to give yourself a leg up and get extra dice and resolve and, and claim. It, you know, the the interesting thing is you mentioned, I mean, how many how many battlefields are in this draft pack? Three? There were three lot. in this one, yeah. Three. And battlefields are always so tricky when you're drafting. It's like, do you, do you pick one early because it's got a good effect and you think you can use it, but you never know if you're going to be the one claiming. I mean... Right. I claimed way more than I normally do in draft. Hmm. And that I don't know if that's a... Th I don't know why. I just. I guess a lot of that has to depend on your dice energy. Right. Can you resolve more of your dice at once, or? But most of my matches, I had to gain a resource, so I was trying mm. to. Ah. Yeah, I mean, one of them you have to think about if you're not the if you're not the aggressive deck, you definitely don't want to take separate. Mm -hmm. Just don't. I mean, it's dealing one unblockable damage if someone claims, and that's no fun. The other one gives a shield. And we all know shields are good, but if you're not claiming it, you're giving it to your opponent. Exactly. And yeah, you're just making your battle harder. Yeah. Yep, and you're just going to be having to chug along and chew through it. Mm -hmm. And the other one is looking at the opponent's hand and discard two events from it. Ooh. And once again, if you're not claiming, it could be bad for you. Mm -hmm. I think out of this pack, as much as I like Disarm, I think I would go with the Typical Mastery. At mm -hmm. this one, as my if this was going to be like my second pick after, let's say there was no characters, yeah, tactical mastery. I action cheating and draft is just beautiful. Mm -hmm. I was That's able a good to point. A Yoda, a Yoda one time in special chaining. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. E even if even if I had opened this pack straight away uh, and saw that rebel trooper, I probably would still take the tactical mastery. To be perfectly honest. Um, over the uh, force choke, or the oh, th this was in the force choke uh, yeah. pack. So let's say let's say those those dice cards were there. Now. Would you take force choke, force protection, mm. trooper, disarm, mastery, or second? That makes it difficult. Now that's oh yeah. yeah with three with those three dice cards in there, I would probably have definitely taken force choke. <laughs> Not, be, be not technically be because I would play it, but because it's an amazing card and I would play it <laughs> down the line. Are you hate drafting? That Mike? would that would almost be a hate draft. That would be a collection draft right there. But also that that card would be awesome in draft. It's only oh, yeah. two cost, two disrupt, one discard, one resource, and then two of the special size deal one unblockable damage to in another character. Then you may turn one of its character upgrade out of any side. So you're getting to do some damage. And you're also getting to do uh, some mitigation. It's awesome. I right. I would totally take Force Choke. Yeah. Um, for me, I, I would definitely be taking Force Choke as well. Um, just because I like that disrupt so much in Giraffe. And once again, yeah. I'll never be unhappy with what else I roll on dice. Maybe except for the blank, of course. But, uh, but either way, the blanks. what I really... What I really found funny about these two packs, I mean, this pack, these three packs, is blue character only, blue character only, and then we have a red character. So yeah. whatever you're going to be picking out of this, know you're going to have to play blue. So you're almost putting yourself into that Anakin if you don't find yeah. another blue character. Which, mm -hmm. you know, is fine. But, yeah, Force Choke is just very strong. It does what you need it to do. Yeah. That that almost instantly would be pushing my deck toward an Anakin Lobot combination of some sort. So we got 10, 13, and we still got 10 points. So, yeah. Yeah, you, you're you probably almost even looking like at a Jawa Lobot Anakin at that point. If you, if you yeah. see no other characters sitting on the deck. But if you were able to pull that Rebel Trooper, I would probably slot that Rebel Trooper in over the Jawa, maybe. Yeah, if you've mm. got that. Yeah. yeah. The rebel, I don't see the rebel trooper <coughs> pass me, back to you. No, probably not. But I mean, you gotta also think there's other people in the draft. Maybe that if everyone was doing the awakening, you got this back. I mean, right. rebel troopers. I would definitely not be on playing him. I like anything that has guardian. Mm -hmm. um, I think guardian is one of those um, key words that people sometimes overlook in draft. I mean, and in general, in all, in a lot of destiny, I've I've been talking about it for a long time. I think Guardian I would, is very I would, important. You know, I would totally don't. agree in in general that it's yeah yeah. Um, my 
my biggest complaint with sealed, and I know we're talking about limited format, and I know everyone's saying the same thing. You you get to open the packs, and then there's a guy next to you who pulls like four of the you know the legendary. Um, at that point, I don't always get upset about that. It, mm-hmm. it still makes sure that the person has to know how to construct a deck. Mm-hmm. Um, yes, they might have an edge by having a card that's a little better, but if they don't know how to construct it, it doesn't how to play it. Ultimately, it's all about the person who's pilot. And it's a dice but, game at the end of the day. They yeah, still it's roll. a dice. Chance you still got to roll, like you said. Absolutely. Yeah, did you hear me say earlier, Alex? We let the guy next to me get E Obi Wan. I did hear that. That kind of pained me. He's lucky I like him. Rob, you're lucky I like you. I keep reminding him of that. Yeah, I, I'm going to say this. I normally stay out of the way of hate drafting. Yeah. But at that point, I would have been playing him just to change my deck because his dice are... I would have been yeah. like... I'm and it didn't come around to like the second set of three, so I was like, crap. Like, I have no blue in my hand. Not a lot of... Hey, if I take him now, I'm taking him to sit him off to the side. He lasted yeah, I mean, that long. He came through two of us, I think, before wow. um, before Rob got him. Yep. Yeah, ouch. Um, Someone should have seen that earlier. So I'm not the only only one to blame, but yeah. If he was sitting he, right no, next he to didn't you, win. He ended up going two and one, I think, on the on the night. But mm. that that just is oh, that's that's just scary. I yeah, just love Obi Wan anyway. I was like, oh believe I'm doing this. Yeah, that, that, <sighs> yeah, I would be, I would, I think I would have just hate drafted and I don't like hate drafting. I don't either. I was like, I looked at him and I was, and I looked back at it and I looked at him and I was like, I have two at home. Like I have, I already have elite Obi-Wan at home. So I was like, man, like it's, <sighs> mm, that's tough. And there was something else in there. I can't remember what else was in the, in the deck that was more helpful to what I was trying to do. I can't remember what it was, but <laughs> okay. You know, that, that kind of makes me laugh. You're like, I don't know what it was, but you remember the Obi-Wan. I can remember the Obi-Wan, but I cannot tell you what the other card was. That's perfect. I love it. That's classic Kim right there. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> well, this has been, I mean, we could sit here and talk about draft forever. Oh, yeah. I needed this pep talk last week, Alex. That's what I told you. Well, here's the thing. I know that there, I've heard that there's uh, draft on PS. Mm, oh, I think so, I. Ha- it's a little finicky. You have to like use a website to basically render the packs in the random packs. Uh, so it's a little bit finicky, but yes, you can do it. Um, I had heard that. I, I haven't still haven't tried figured it. it out. Uh, yeah, I definitely still. Haven't I can it. barely figure out TTS. <laughs> As well, is, I don't know that I should tinker with that. Jason, if you don't mind, I'd like to throw a shout out. I have a um, national qualifier coming up March. The end of March, at Adepticon in Chicago area. Chicago it's gonna Ch- area. It's going to be in Ch- uh, Schaumburg, Illinois. That's where it's going to be at. Um, I'm looking to get games in because I'm going to be in the Legacy and the what is cool. it? The Infinite format as well. Nice. So I'm going to try both. I'm crossing my fingers that I'll get five wins just so I can get. <laughs> So that's so cool. I can get a, so I can get a nice card, but yeah, if anybody wants to practice on TTS, please hit me up. Cool, excellent. Uh, He's an all-around good guy. I'll I'll vouch for him. And where anybody, where else uh, where else can they get a hold of you, Alex? I'm on the Discord. Um, you can also look me up on Facebook, Alexander Helt Jr. I'll be easy enough to that. I'm not scared. <laughs> so. Yeah, hit me up. It'll be great. I'll play some games. I know that I've I've been talking to Ruben. We've worked on like a, a janky mill deck just for fun. Oh, then, mill decks. You guys and your mill decks. They're fun to play. I love playing. <laughs> well, this one's completely <laughs> different because it's not milling off the top of your um, library. Okay. It's, it's actually a hero that's bu- crushing it out of your... Uh, I could get... I could maybe get behind that. It doesn't really work well, but it's fun. Nice. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> well, cool. Alex, thank, well, thanks, thanks, Alex. So yeah, much thank for your, you so much, thank Alex. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. We'll talk to you soon. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.
<gasps> Whoops. I went agree. Hold on. Ah! <laughs> yeah, they don't look right. Oh no, I'm not even looking. But you no, know what I would say. Speak softly and drive a big tank. All right, and that that was Alex. That was awesome. That was a good interview. Absolutely. Really enjoyed it. He's good people. I like Alex he a is. lot. Yeah, he is very good people. He helped. Uh, he is one of the... He helped me. Uh, between he and Simon, that's how I got my... Mm. Oh, nice. Absolutely. Yeah. That's great. So, uh, of course, we're at the uh, towards the end of our show here. We've got a few questions that have been asked on the chat that we're going to do our best to answer. Uh, wow. The first question came from a crum1138. Wait, wait, wait. We didn't do our cool transition. Oh, sorry. Hold on. Yeah. Hold on. Sorry. <laughs> Pause. Pause real quick. There can be no mistakes this time. All right, now you may go, Jason. All right, so we're going to answer some questions. <laughs> we had uh, we have a couple questions that have popped into the chat uh, throughout the show. Uh, <laughs> first of which is going to be from Crum1138. I see what you did there. Um, Ayla, best caustic character in Legacies. I think Ooh. she'd have a run for it. And I don't think anybody saw her coming. No, that's very true. Mm. Right. And she's getting what? so much love lately. She I, I like her a lot. People didn't I look at her, her yeah. as, uh, as intently until the Yoda special chaining started. And they're like, oh, wait. Mm -hmm. Poe and Ayla can do it, too. Yeah. But, um... So, I know, right? Yeah, so, uh... May maybe... I maybe. dig her. Hey, what's up, AG Wizard? Oh, hey, and shout out to Crumb. He's he uh, he gave us a big uh, a big share over on the Indianapolis uh, webpage. And thanks, man. Yeah, he's been he's been talking it up in the chat tonight. So thanks, Crumb. Um, our buddy Joe, who always likes to come and uh, troll the chat, yeah, uh, he does. He asked, uh, what <laughs> non-meta deck do you me? still play, even though it may not be the best deck? For me, I just enjoy the shenanigans of Dooku Ventress, even though it only wins fifty percent of the time. True. Hmm. I'm gonna say my Vader Royal Guard still. I love. I love. Uh, I, I know love you that love deck. that deck. I got a, hey, and the community really made that community made me still play that deck, and so I, I just I love going back to it and being reminiscent, and uh, it still does pretty well. It's a pretty mean deck, so yeah. What about you? Uh, I've been lately. I've been missing my baby Vader nines. Oh yeah, that's a good deck. Like, I had so much fun playing that deck. And I didn't play it like a jerk, so don't even start on me on that. I didn't overwrite like her on nines. I was fairly, um, I don't know, I held back a lot on that. I would overwrite here and there, but not to the extent that it got with, with him. Mm -hmm. I didn't balance ambition to five more. I didn't do any of that kind of stuff. Oh, that, that hurt so bad when that happened. I, I, I didn't play him like that. I played him pretty laid back, but it was they were just fun to play together. Like, I don't know. It just seemed to work well. Even I didn't win a lot with it. I I would agree. Probably fifty percent of the time, I probably won with that deck. Ag um, uh, Ag nines is uh, FN two one nine nine. FN two one nine nine. Yep. And um, I still will always love Hanle, even though it 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 probably only won thirty percent of. The You've talked about that deck a lot. We know how much you love, love that your, deck. You love your Han. But I think it's just because it's the first deck. This is my first CCG, so this is the first deck I built all by myself, like a grown up, and it did okay because it was just Awakenings at the time. Like right. it did okay, so. Um, and it's Han. <laughs> yeah. Well, you can probably guess what I'm going to say, so it's not really worth saying. You like? Uh... I was going to add something sarcastic, and I decided not. <laughs> uh. I held mm. back. I know I can't think of anything witty either right now. Uh, I couldn't thanks. think of anything witty. It's too thanks. late. It's past my <laughs> bedtime. Tell us, Jason, what is your favorite pairing? It's not a pairing at all. It's the man. Palpatine uh, with his force landing like this. <laughs> <laughs> no, that the that the jaw was made dropped to his knees, so he was. I know right five of them. <laughs> so says Tom, so says Simon. Um. <laughs> And uh, uh, also, uh, do they keep seats open for all regionals still to come for Worlds? Yes. Um, 
I think so. Yeah, because that application form is still up, even though the uh, the random draw form is not. You can still mm -hmm. access the uh, reserve it is? seat form. Yeah. What? Okay, wait. Explain. So if I if I win a regionals, that's not happening. You win a regional, you get a then world you go. Seat, oh, and okay. Still, still yeah. First thought you meant I was like the application that I already got disinvited. Wait. Okay, no. I got it. I got it. I gotta go win a regional. I'll get right on that. There you go. Just and it. then uh and then a late entry here from um Wiki Prodigy. I like that name. Who pairs with Newt Gunray well? Wookie. Hmm. Okay, so Newt is, uh, he is a 811 villain with 8 health. Red? Red. Is he red? Yes, he is red. Uh, he shows, um, one indirect damage, one focus to disrupt a resource, uh, plus one modified resource and a blank. And his, his character card reads, each opponent gains one fewer resources during the upkeep phase to a minimum Ooh. of one. Unless that opponent discards the top two cards of their deck, so he is nasty. Pretty nasty. He he looks like personally. I haven't. I have not played him, and I have not seen him played very well yet. So I don't know who he'd be paired what paired best with. But I see him in a single die format in some sort of milling deck. Control. I would mill. say mill. Yeah. Could he go with job? Could he go with Jabba? Uh, yes, he can. Let's see, uh, oh, that's not Jawa Jawa. Yeah, yeah, I'd love to see, um, I'd love to see more. I, I think Newt's seen some play in some decks, but not, not a whole lot. Not huge. Yeah, the Hut's 11 I got him the other day. So you could run Pizza the Hut. Let's see, you could run an Elite Jabba at 14. Ooh. Newt at eight, and then who else could you run? So Wookie Prodigy says he's running mm. Enoot Kylo Royal Guard. So you're basically using Newt. Uh, so you're using Newt as for control, and you're nice. And then what, that's a good idea. What Kylo? Kylo two. So you're also you're also running Kylo for control, and then your Royal Guard for your. Guard yeah. Guardian. <laughs> Guardian. I like that mic. Very cool. Very exciting. That's I like that idea. Yeah. That's interesting. I because I, 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 I do like to I would like to see Newt in some sort of uh control because for bringing someone down to a single resource around is That's critical. That would hurt. That would make you really uh really just I don't know. I'd be. I'd it's be really, really going to limit their options. Yeah, I mean, yes. yeah. they're gonna. They're. It's gonna take them way longer to get any put any kind of upgrades down, and they're not gonna have much of an mm. option to mitigate your dice unless they have free. Unless they have free cards, but mm -hmm. and there's plenty of those out there. But yeah. very cool. Yeah. So he's he's nice, doing it man. to guardian the damage for Newt, and then uh, and he's getting focused. Okay. Cool. I dig that. That's a, that's a cool little that. deck. I'd like to see that. Maybe, uh, Wookie, do you play on TTS? If so, uh, maybe I can see that deck played, or you can give me a little rundown on TTS one day. That would be cool. be awesome. Mm -hmm. um, so, as we always do at the end of the show, we have a little, little Star Wars moment. Because Star Wars is what it's all about, and we're all Star Wars fans here at the Chance Cube. Because Star Wars um, is awesome. Yeah. Unlike those people who play this game and have never seen Star Wars before, they're pretty cool they too. They exist, and it's I, I find it interesting. I love the whole community. <laughs> we love you all equally. I just right. I like I'm I'd like to pick their brain on their take on this game from that. Anyway, right. that's another show. You're like what? How'd you get into this game? But let's oh, let's go over that. The Jedi. What do you know? <laughs> All right. Jason, what is new with you in Star Wars? You can take the one I was going to say, Jason. It's okay. Rebels. Whoa. Oh, hey, Joe wants to talk about Rebels, too. So we can't actually say anything about Rebels. And um, Mike I is can probably closing hey, chat can, right now. Yeah, I could mute it if you guys want to talk well, about it. I'm worried no. about the chat. No, we no, don't want to talk other about people it. Made, I mean, it just aired. The, the, there's only what? like three. There's only like one episode left, four right? Uh, after this, I think it's only two, two okay. or four episodes left. Math. Yeah, but you know, we can't say Mike hasn't caught up yet. So um, and I wouldn't want to spoil it for anybody else that might be listening or watching too. 
Yeah. Everybody's telling me to mute it so you can type spoilers. <laughs> if you uh, type spoilers, you know how I am with spoilers. Oh, Joe. I will hunt yeah. you down, Joe. Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> But it's been great. I've loved every it's single been. episode. Uh, nail biters, and I keep ask, I keep telling myself, "Man, this is a kid show." Like hell, right? It's not what? a kid show. It's not a kid show. It's it's they just, just a found show. a landing point on a kid station to get them actual. So it the, okay. Here's what they did: they put Star Wars Rebels on a kid station so grownups would watch and make it look like they have awesome viewership. Mm. Ta-da! True story. That's Disney um, for you. Because yeah, their Teenage Mutant so. Ninja Turtle show stinks. But anyway. So that's been fun for me. Uh, what about you, Kim? So I found this thing online that I'm going to um, start a GoFundMe fund for it. Because I need this thing in my life. So it is... I'm hitting the link to maybe if I can get it to work so I can pull it back up. Because there was cool stuff I wanted to read. Open, you fools! Oh, crumbs. Whoa. Those aren't mine! Although mine did it a minute ago. Okay, fine. It won't open. Mine won't. It is an interactive Chewbacca, you guys. This thing is freaking amazing. It is probably a child's toy, but he roars and he makes all kinds of other noises. You can rock him to sleep and he snores. He's a total interactive doll. They said there's like some other Easter eggs and stuff for him. Um, so they, they announced it, Hasbro announced that at the 2018 New York Toy Fair, we gotta figure out how to get to the Toy Fair. I'm just saying. Um, okay. the downside is it's $129.99, which, um, is a lot to fork out for an interactive Chewbacca that I would take everywhere with me. Jim, are you watching? Jim. Jim Breeze, are you watching? Jim is not um, watching because he would slow your internet speed down. That's true, he would. So... It's 16 inches. Where else was the other thing? Like, so he roars, laughs, and has a hundred different sound and motion reactions. I need to get this thing too. How much? Not what's to the mention, price? 130 bucks, which is not bad. terrible. Don't it's start not a terrible. Go, don't not start a GoFundMe for that. Well, I'll take all the extra help I can get, and I will bring him on the show, and just, he can help me pull out the winning name. I'm just saying. Why don't you do like a 24-hour Twitch stream where you like do tons <laughs> of like. Star Wars stuff, and you get donations. I'd literally fill like twenty minutes, Mike. Um, it's not that hard. That's it goes idea. pretty quick. You should. That's true. My uh, so my family my family just got home from Disneyland. I can hear them. Oh, you're to- oh, outside. That's why. That's why. Like, that's why the dogs went crazy. So the people yelling out must outside my house are probably just cow tipping or something. Then that's all they were talking. <laughs> what about you, Mike? <laughs> oh my sorry, God! I almost Mike. spit that drink out. I'm sorry, uh, Mike. Besides my sweet pork mug, um, uh, uh, what is what is new for Star Wars? Again, like this move is just it's like taking up so much of my time. Um, lately, my uh, my youngest daughter, every night when I put her to sleep, she wants a story, but she doesn't want like a real story. She wants me to make up a story, and so she'll like she'll pick like four characters from the Disney realm. And I'll make a story. Nice. And lately, it's been a lot of uh, R2-D2 and Elena of Avalor. So we're doing, <laughs> we're like, on, we're in Crossover City lately. That's amazing. Uh, yeah, and then like I wrapped in a little bit C-3PO. And uh, I'm just sticking with like like all light, light side. But uh, if, right now. But yes, I've been making up a lot of random Star Wars stories. That's lately. awesome. Yeah. Have you seen the cool little like five minute bedtime story Star Wars book that is out for kids? Like it's, I don't know. It's yeah, yeah. an inch thick. Yes, yeah, I like I've got a bunch of them. The five, the five minute, five minute Star Wars stories, right? Yeah, like I've almost yeah. picked that up for a couple of different. I have it. Um, it is very my good. Life. My daughters love that book. So, yeah, yeah I would I almost, pick it up. Even it's good for you too. And so, so all that stuff is supposed to be canon. So I don't. That's. I mean, pick it up. You know? Well, we've talked before about how uh, I probably got about five minutes reading a book before I fall asleep at night. So that might yeah. be the perfect amount of go. story for. Me. <laughs> Very cool. uh, all right it's well, true well th- to one thing to point out like it is with mike's uh porg monk that's happening back here i can't help but continue to picture chewy trying to like eat said porg because he's drinking out of the porg's head dude. and i thought about this all stinking night and somebody just mentioned it in the chat too and i was like it is kind of like he chewbacca one of those porgs i'm just that's saying that's what's up <laughs> yeah 
But if anybody wants to uh, send me ideas that I can stream so that I can, uh, you can donate and I can get this interactive Chewy, I will bring him awesome. on the stream. I'll, I will I will donate my time to moderate and to make the, the overlay <laughs> for it. I will do How that. How much foot? Like, he could pull, he could help us pull out the winning name for the week. Like, can't we write this off as like a business? Come and on, the, and then there's you gotta can be a loophole. Technically, you could. You could finish my tax the, accountant would. the whole stream would be rocking the the would and, then asleep, fall asleep and then he would and snore, snore and then that would be the end of the stream. <sighs> It'd be awesome. On that note. <laughs> on that note, we're going to end the show. Guys, thanks Thank you so, so much, much guys. Those who are watching you guys. live, we appreciate you hanging out with us. Uh, for those who are watching this later, um, please give thanks. us your feedback. If you feel like we're, we're leaving you out on something, uh, we want to make sure the show is good for everyone. Mm -hmm. So just just holler at us and say holla. Do something different, and you know what? We're we're open to the feedback and suggestions. And Kim we'll at thechangecube.com. Keep those long Facebook posts coming. The longer, folks. the better. Absolutely. I got you. I got you. If um, you're so inspired, uh, we've got the Patreon. Um, you can also, of course, subscribe to this channel here. If you are a Amazon Prime member and have not subscribed to a Twitch channel, uh, that's free. You get to subscribe it to one per month for free. You have to. Every month you have to subscribe. We don't like automatically renew, but we still get the bonus from it. So it really helps us out, gets us uh, these places, give you some, uh, some. Look at that! I know. Do you see that? You that's, get you get a little die when you subscribe. That's me, guys. That. Thank you, Mister Hill. So... That's my Smurf account. So yes, you do. You get that cool little, uh, cool. cool little emoji. So yeah, it's nice. just one of the little perks, and you get everything that uh, a Patreon member would get at the five dollar level. So that includes Ooh, the. Uh, that's some of those sweet yeah. alternate art cards. Yeah. Stay tuned and... on Facebook. We'll show you what. Uh, there's some new excitement coming to those cards. And you get in yeah. the hangout, which is pretty awesome. Uh, Absolutely, we get we're in the hangout. There. Yeah, cool. Joe's there. Thank you so much, folks. Posting polls. <laughs> Have <laughs> Thank a great you guys. week, you guys. Have a good night. All right, bye, guys. This has been the Chance Cube, a Star Wars Destiny podcast, a nonprofit organization dedicated to building community through gaming. Visit our website for all things Star Wars Destiny, including our price watch, meta tracker, and latest articles from the Chance Cube family. Find our latest videos on YouTube, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and visit us at patreon.com slash thechancecube. Your patronage allows us to grow this program and help us give back to the gaming community by sponsoring events, giveaways, and supporting our own community building initiatives. This is Mike Hill, the voice of the Chance Cube. Thanks for listening. The Chance Cube is not affiliated with Fantasy Flight Games, Lucasfilms, or the Walt Disney Company.